Hey guys, Tark with Cyclone FPV, and we're going to do part two right now of the QI96 custom DIY build from Cyclone FPV drones in Texas. Um, the first thing we've done now is we've, we've done part one, which was actually assembling the frame. It's a pretty simple frame to assemble, but we want to make sure that all the parts are there and everything checks out okay, right? Once you get this done, the next thing to do is we're going to go to the step two, which is going to be the ESC and motors. The reason we're combining this into step two is because there's really not much to do with the ESC. Uh, because we still have to measure the motors out to begin with, but we have to take the ESC out to make sure that we have the measurement proper, right? So I'm gonna get right to it here, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the top of the bench here, and there we go, we'll just get on over. And what you've got right here is three of my four motors. I don't know where the fourth one went. Um, I will have to go grab that one, but I thought I grabbed four. I don't know where I put it, but in either case, it's fine because I'm only gonna do two of the motors to begin with, and that way, and then you guys don't have to watch the rest of that. It's gonna be repetitive. And we're going to go ahead and open this up and get started. So first thing is going to be to let's go ahead and open this up. Whoops. So let me go ahead and break this tag here. And this is going to be the F413 stack, right? So when I open that stack up, I'm going to go ahead and get my contents out. So this is going to be my antenna. I'm going to go ahead and kind of set these aside. So I'm going to set my antenna aside. Uh, I'll take my boards out here. So we've got, uh, here's our ESC. I'll set that right there. Um, here is our flight controller. Sit there right there. And I'm going to move this. Let me find a spot for this. Maybe I don't want it off camera, but I just kind of want it out of the way. Put that right there. All right. We'll open this light post trap up because it's making the whole thing tip over. There we go. Now it's sitting flat. All right. So we've got our flight controller, our ESC. Somewhere in here is our VTX. There it is. All right. We've got our camera. Okay, and then we've got our screws and all that good stuff and our manual and everything else, which we'll be referencing. That won't be an issue. Our capacitor, and then the wires for the VTX, the camera, and that pretty much does it. And our stickers that make the drone fly faster, which we can go ahead and, I've never put one of these on before, but then again, that's why my drones, I guess, haven't flown fast in the past. I'll put a blue one on somewhere. Uh, stickers are kind of too big for this drone, I guess. So I guess we'll keep with the tradition and not put it on right now. So anyways, let's get rid of all that. I don't have time to waste. I want to get to this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take off the screws that are holding all this in place. Actually, I think I'll just take it off from the bottom because I don't need the standoffs here. Well, yeah, I'll leave them on. I'll take it off from the top because I need to, when I measure the motor wires, I'm going to need to know um, the standoffs. Uh, how long they should be right so i mean i need to have the standoffs there so i know how long the wires to be and if they have to wrap around the standoff or not so let's find a container to put these wires in let me see what i got here real quick hmm. I got... well i got an old wi-fi 2 container i'll use that let me throw that in there here we go this will be my container to hold my screws and all the other knickknacks Let's throw those in there, leave that just like that, and let's get started. Okay, screws go in there. Uh, we'll put frame pieces over here. And like I said, we're gonna leave that connected. Okay, so using the uh, screws that we have from HGLRC, let's go ahead and open this up. All right, and we're gonna start this pretty simple. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the 2020 holes because obviously you've got two sets of holes here under, underneath. We're going to go to the, the outside holes there. All right. And we're going to go ahead and use their five millimeter standoffs. I believe these are close to five mil. So let's go ahead and do that. Try to make this go in there faster. Okay. There's one. And you're going to do this four times. Now, I'm not going to speed this part up. You guys are going to have to painfully watch this part uh, because I have to painfully do it. And, well, I can't speed it up right now. So let's just get to it. All right. That'll be the second one.
right, third one's almost done. So it does seem to take forever. And then we'll get to the fourth one here. There we go. Okay, now that that's on, we can go ahead and get the ESC put in. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. That's gonna be pretty fairly easy. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna check your flight controller, right? So on your flight controller, you've got the arrow pointing forward. Sorry, if you hold the, if you hold the USB to where it's to your left, you'll see that arrow right there. That arrow's pointing forward. So if you look at the bottom here, these are the pins that the, that the um, ESC is gonna snap into. So this is gonna fit just like that, which means your ESC needs to fit down right here okay just like that there you go okay now with that being right there uh, we have two options now because as you can tell this does leave you quite a bit of room to put your transmitter or your receiver down here but I'm not sure we're gonna do that on mine uh, I put the receiver lower and I put the transmitter uh, on the back okay now we're gonna make sure that everything fits here properly that's going to be the key, uh, the key thing here. But um, I did put my receiver on the back, and I'm probably going to do that on this build, although you can opt to put it underneath because I am leaving a lot more room here than I did before. All right, so now with this in place, now we can figure out how long the motors need to be. Uh, the first thing that we kind of can tell is that it really doesn't matter with the standoffs because we're not coming around the sides anymore. And you have your two pads here. One pad's going to be for your uh, LiPo. The other pad's going to be for your... Um, uh, capacitor right but right now the first thing I want to do is I want to take out the motors and I want to make sure that we have everything set for that so I'm just going to do two motors because the uh, everything's going to be proportional here so when you figure out one uh, motor the opposite motor will be the same okay, in length so let's just go ahead and get the motors out okay now the screws for the motors we're going to go ahead and I will put those let me put all this in this bin here so we don't lose any of it picked up. I cannot. Let's go ahead and use the tweezers. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing with the screws though. So here's the screws that HCLRC gives you. And these screws are going to be for two purposes. One's going to be to hold in the props. The other one is going to be to screw the uh, motor down. Now this is uh, roughly a little over three millimeter carbon fiber. This screw is going to be way too long for that. Uh, let me see what else other options we have. Um, I have a feeling that these screws are all going to be a little too long or a little too short. So I'm going to do something different with the screws and use a different size. For those of you that ordered the kit, if I did not send you the size of the screws you have don't fit, let me know. And we'll go ahead and uh, send you some ones that will. Uh, but for this for this kind of a kit, just to go over the screw lengths here, um, grab a set of six millimeter and see what those look like. Now, I think six millimeter is going to be good. So that's probably what I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here real quickly so I can measure out um, uh, the length of the wire. So to do that, I'm just going to fasten two of the screws, okay? I don't need to fasten all four. I just need to fasten two of them and try to put this motor as centered as possible. And then I can get an idea of the length of the, screw, of the wire, okay? So what we're talking about is we're talking about taking this wire. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to zip tie it down. But we're going to tape the wire... And we're going to come around here and we're going to pop it in right there okay so the option is a we can go from underneath if we're not going to run our receiver underneath we can take the wire underneath kind of keep it clean uh, option b would be to just keep it really clean this way and run around the edge here right sorry run around the edge here and then run it this direction either way i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to run in the outside for now because i kind of prefer doing that as opposed to going under anything so i'm going to measure this at about that length right there, whatever this length is. And I'm gonna measure it uh, from the um, from the end of the uh, uh, heat shrink that they put from the factory. So let's just say that we are gonna need, if that works out right, that looks like it's gonna be too long. So let me just see if I can make that a little bit tighter. At from the heat shrink, I wanna go about, uh, I guess 30 millimeters, okay? So for the back motor, and just keep track of this now. So for the back motor, 
I'm going to take this off now and I'm going to go ahead and cut it and tin it and solder it and make sure it's right, okay? So that we can see this actually happen. So we're going to go 30 millimeters on this, right? So the best way to cut 30 millimeters out and do it consistently is to use that method where we use the heat shrink as our measurement tool. Now, because this is a small motor, I'm going to go ahead and just measure 30 millimeters out of a new piece of heat shrink. These are 40. So I'm going to cut about 10 millimeters off of this. It's right there. I'm going to put this back on. And that's going to give me roughly where I want to be. Let me just kind of straighten that cut out real quick. There we go. All right. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this heat shrink, slide it over the wires here to the, uh, to the factory heat shrink from HGLRC. Right there. That's going to be 30 millimeters. All right. And then we're just going to cut straight across. <clears throat> and this way we don't have to keep measuring. It'll be that one. And then you'll do the same for the other back motor. Now, for the front motors, uh, it looks like it might be a little different here. And But you know what? It's almost a straight shot. So it's, it's probably not going to be much different. Looking at this, um, yeah, I'd probably go about, you know, it's really tough on this one. Let me see. I'm going to open a second motor now because I'm almost thinking 35 millimeters and, and maybe even 40, but I think 40 would be too long, but we'll try for 35 and let's see what happens, okay? So here's the motor here, and I'm not going to screw it down right now. I'm just going to kind of hold it and see, but if I want to run this down and zip tight there, and I want this to be about that long, so what is that distance? Uh, it's going to be about 35, okay. So I'm going to take another, I'm going to write on this one, if I can find a permanent marker, one second. I'll just find a pen here. So on this heat shrink, I'm going to write 30 mm. Okay, and I'll put that aside. I'm going to get one more, and I'm going to write on it 35 mm. And just keep these, these are really good to have. Because once you have them measured out, you'll use them quite a bit for other things. So let's go ahead and knock this down to 35 millimeters, which is going to be right there. Okay. And now we will take the next set of wires from the other motor I just opened. Oops. And we'll measure that out. So here's the motor here. Okay. Let's run this one down. 35, and we'll stop it right there, that's about right, okay, and then let's cut it, okay, so that's 35, now these little wires here, we're not going to need them for right now, I would, like I said with all my wires when I cut them, is I save them, uh, because you don't know if you're ever going to need to take one of these motors and extend it again or not, so just kind of put the wires aside for right now, just save them, okay, now the boxes with the motors are already open, I can throw those out, we can clean up our mess here a little bit, all right, Okay, so now we know that on the back motors, we're gonna be running 30 millimeter wire cuts and on the front motors, we're gonna run 35. Okay, so we've got two sets there and that's why now it'll be identical on left and right. So that's why I'm only gonna show you how to do two and then we don't have to sit here and watch me do the rest, but we'll come back to the video when all four are done. So let's go ahead and just knock these two out, right? So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and tin these wires and to do that, we're gonna strip them back and we're only gonna take off about, um, oh, I don't know, let me see. I just noticed that I'm like, what is this here? There we go. All right. Oh, it's like halo bright around here for some reason. Uh, let me see. There we go. All right. Uh, there we go. All right. So let's get this back. And what we're going to do is we're going to want to take off about, oh, I don't know, two millimeters, I guess. So we'll do this one. Sorry about all that, guys. That's, the, that's our website getting some sales coming in right now. Uh, I did not mute my phone. So you're going to hear a bunch of noises during this video. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're going to put that in the solder paste, right? I'm sorry, the um, flux paste right there, and then just twist them up, okay? Just like that. And you want to twist them up because you want to make sure all the strands are tight so that they don't uh, come destranded when you are trying to solder this to the board, all right? So there's one set, and then we're going to do the other motor. And again, you're going to go about two millimeters uh, to the wire there of exposed wire. Okay, and then again, we're going to put this in solder paste. All right. And then we'll twist that up. And 
you know what? I probably should just do all four motors. Ah, you know what? No, never mind. Never mind. I know it gets boring to watch this, so let me just get this off the table. All right, so now what we got to do is we got to tin these. Now, I'm going to use the helping hands in my nerd glasses here because I am trying to teach some of the kids who are watching this uh, how to tin properly, and I do not want to teach them some of my bad habits. So let's just go ahead and grab the helping hands. All right, there they are. And let's see, where is my motor? So here's my first set of motors right here. And so the flux paste is already on here and the soldering iron is heating up right now. I just turned it on and we can get everything else kind of out of the way here a little bit. All right. All right, perfect. Now let me get my solder iron. Let me get some solder. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna burn off a little piece of the solder iron so we can use it. And I should be at temperature here pretty quickly. There we go. Okay, so it's just gonna be fairly quick. Get the uh, solder over the wire, under the wire right there, hot. And then you're just gonna basically tin it up. So let's do that one, two, and three. So those wires are tinned up. That came out good. Let's just do the next set. This will be the 35 millimeter set. So this is gonna be the front motor. All right, and we're just gonna go ahead and tin this up. We'll do one, two, to the third one. All right, and then if you get that, end up having that huge ball of solder on there, just put it in the sponge your cleaning sponge, that's where it's supposed to go. All right, now, now that that's done, the motors are ready to go, but now our ESC isn't, right? So let's go ahead and get the motor set aside and let's grab our ESC that's on the frame. And we do need to get this ready now too. So to do that, we need to prep it by um, putting some flux, flux paste on there. So let's just go ahead and to make sure your flux pen is working, uh, just go ahead and run it across the table there. You can see that there's uh, definitely a sign that it's working. So let's go ahead and knock that out. Now, HGLRC did at one time go in and add uh, and reinforce the pins here on the board. This board does not have that reinforcement. So I'm going to go ahead and take my hot glue gun just because I feel like making sure this is going to be okay. I'm just going to be very, very, now you don't have to do this. It's just something I do put a very small dab right there and then another one on this side. Okay. And then what you can do is if you have a hot air gun like this one, just kind of hit it and that way it'll kind of spread and melt without sticking up and hitting the flight controller when we put it on there, okay? So there we go, and then let that cool off. All right, now we've got our flux paste on, okay? And now all we gotta do is pre tin our board. So to pre tin the board, we're gonna use our solder. Again, I'm just gonna get a piece off of here and then I usually end up with a bunch of solder like this. So let me just grab this one. Okay, now we're just gonna really quickly pretend the board and to do that we're just going to take the solder and go to the pads all right one two three there we go and you don't want to do anything big here i mean you're just putting enough on there to do the work but you don't really need to put a ton because your motor wires are also tinned all right and so when they come together it's going to make a nice solder connection there and then you won't have to worry about it all right so let's just do another one here there's one, two, and I guess you could take the standoff. So you're having a hard time reaching around here to get to the solder pad. I don't know why this one's not taking. Let me try that again. I think this is giving me a hard time. All right, there it goes. And sometimes, guys, if the flux has not dried, you will have a little bit of a hard time here. So let me just make sure I get this done. One. There we go, let me get that pad two, and then we'll do three right here. There we go, okay. So it's all good there, right? Everything looks like it's ready to go. So with that done, and let me see if I can zoom in to show you guys what that should look like. So as you can see now, we've got, you know, it's a little blurry, but we've got our solder uh, all the way around on each of the pads here. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put our first set of motors down, and then we're gonna stop the video at that because that's pretty much it for step two. Uh, remember the 35 millimeter wires and I'm not going to heat shrink these because they're they're kind of short as it is and I really don't think unless you want to color code it I guess I mean you know what Heck, I'll just do it so let's go ahead and add some color to this thing so I'm going to take these kind of these hard orange looking ones and because of the uh, low the kind of the low run on this I mean you really don't have much uh, heat shrink that you'd be using um, unless you want to try to get it to fit over the HGRC heat shrink which you could do, 
uh, which wouldn't be a problem. And then you would really only want about, if you choose to use heat shrink, I would tell you to use whatever this is right here, which is, let me find my ruler, uh, wherever I put the ruler, here it is. Okay, so let's just say that we're gonna use 20 millimeters. Still seems like, oh, we'll go 20 millimeters of heat shrink, okay? So go ahead and cut yourself off for 20 and then use that to measure out the other ones. And that should be okay. I think, I don't know about for the back if that's gonna work or not, but we'll see. So I'm gonna set that one aside. We'll try it on the back. First thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and get this on here. And that's, that's only if you want color. This really, this heat shrink is gonna have no other purpose than to just kind of add to the look at this point because the wire run is so short anyway that you're not talking about placing the wires in any uh, serious hazard risk or anything of being snagged either way. But let's just go ahead. Remember, hold the wires together so they don't crisscross each other when you're heat shrinking so they don't get pressed together. All right, so we'll do that. And let's go ahead and do this here. And this here. Okay, and when you're done heat shrinking, just make sure to press it down nicely. Make sure it's on there really nice, well fitted, and you'll be able to see it nice and flat. And then this is going to be a front motor, so I'll just do uh, motor number two right now. And for that, I'm going to use a six millimeter screw right here. Let's go ahead. Oh, that's not going to be screwed out. Uh, let's see. I don't need these glasses at this point. There we go. Okay. There's one. And then let's do the uh, other one. Thought it had, there it is. I'm gonna put the other one in here, just like that. All right, so now that's in place. So now all we're gonna do is using our tweezers because we know we're gonna zip tie this right here, right? So let's just put the zip tie so we can kind of see what we're working with. Let me grab a zip tie here real quick. And when I do the zip ties, I come in like this, right? So this is the front. This is the, we're gonna call this the inside of the, the two arms here. So I always zip tie like this, right? And this way, when I pull this over, it's gonna kind of stay out of the way of the image of the drone. So I'm gonna pull it down. And I guess what I'll do is I'll run it as close to here as possible. There we go. All right, that'll keep a nice straight line. And then we can go ahead and feed this into the, um, let me get rid of this stuff here, get my tweezers and get the soldering iron. All right, now we're gonna start from the outside and these wires are way too long. If you cut them to two millimeter, like I was telling you, that's to make sure that you get a good tin on there, but then you wanna cut half of that off, okay? So make sure to grab the wires and make sure to slice uh, down to, or cut away about one millimeter of it to where you only have one millimeter left just like this here. You don't need much wire to make this work, much exposed wire that is, and you definitely don't want too much on a board this small, okay? So let's just cut these away. Let's set that one, there we go, perfect. Now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start from the outside in, this way we're not soldering over wires, we're not cross soldering, and we're not gonna risk doing any damage to this. So uh, if you can get this board to stay or the frame to stay, great. Uh, I do find that, the, you know what, I think the standoff is in the way here, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the standoff out. Now, I don't know if that's the only one I'm gonna take out, but I do know that this one is definitely in my way right now. So let me drop that and the screw in here. I think this one may also be in my way, but let's just see if I can work it with this, okay? Really doesn't matter since we're not trying to wrap this around the standoff. So let's just go ahead and put, there you go, there's one. Let's go with the middle. Let me put this on here or something so it stops sliding all over the place. There you go. There's two. And then we will do three. Okay, so there we go. Now with that done, we can take the wires and actually kind of make them kind of disappear nicely, but we can still put our standoff back. So now I'll put the standoff back just like this. This is gonna come out looking really sharp, actually. Put the screw in first, okay. Screw that down. All right, 
keep everything running nicely. And now we're going to go ahead and do the back motor next. And there's my other um, uh, heat shrink for the motor. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that over there. Okay, let's go ahead and heat shrink that down as well like we did the last one. And then let's go ahead, before we even mount this, let's go ahead and just cut those wires down about halfway. All right, there we go. Clean off the table a little bit. And now what we'll do is we'll find a spot here. I'll just go cross motor and put this on this side. All right. And I need to get my, I'm gonna put these ones aside here and grab some different six millimeters. So let me just set these up. And I wanna use these ones here. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Okay, now, again, I'll get the zip tie. Just gonna make sure that we know what we're working with here. And again, we're gonna come from the outside with the buckle out, and we're gonna go ahead and pull it to the center, like we did on the other one. This way it keeps consistency, and we're gonna pretty much grab the same spot on the wire that we did before. All right, make sure it's straight, guys. And then just zip tie it down. All right, that looks good. So now we can clip that. Throw that away. Throw these two away. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna I'm gonna uh, remove this one, this standoff real quickly, because I know that's gonna get my weight. At least it seems like it is. Let me put that screw right in there so I know that's the one that goes with it. Okay. So now let's grab the motor wire from here. Okay. Let's take that to the back. And again, we're gonna do basically the same thing. Start from the outside and solder it in. Okay, and we're not gonna cross over any wires this way or any already uh, completed solder points. So here we go. We'll start with motor three, wire one. There's, there's one. All right, then we're gonna to go to motor three, the middle wire, which is right here. We'll go ahead and get this to kind of hold again. All right, and then motor three, wire three, which is the outside wire. Well, I guess you call it the inside wire in this case, but it's gonna be wire three either way. There we go. Okay, so now all three of those are done, and this looks very clean here. So we can go ahead now and we can tuck that and kind of keep that nice in line right there. Okay, all right. So this is what you should have now, and it should stay pretty organized, all right? Uh, and you've got all three motor wires here and here soldered and everything is on with just two screws holding them in place for right now um, And we'll finalize the screws later. And so that's where we're at now. I'm going to go back and I'm going to finish um, The rest of the I'm going to finish the other two motors You don't have to watch me do that. I'm gonna do that real quickly And then we're going to go to part two of the or part three of this actually which is going to be um, getting the flight controller ready and putting it on and then getting the camera ready and the BTX ready. So it's gonna be three, four, five, and so forth, okay? So uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, email me at targetcyclonefpv.com. Make sure to please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then also, if you don't mind following us on Facebook. All right, guys, see you shortly. God bless, and uh, say five. Bye.